Monster Hunter World's weapon progression paths are much simpler than previous games, but there are some standout paths you may or may not notice. This guide series is going to focus on weapon upgrades to take you through low rank and high rank as painlessly as possible for each weapon type. Obviously, since we're talking about flying through the early game, we don't want to sit and farm monsters for days. You will need to farm a bit following these paths, but hopefully not too much. The majority of the parts also come from easier monsters, which should make progress fairly painless. You need to hoard everything you come across. If you see a mining node, hit it. Bone pile, take everything. The last thing you want to do is have to go randomly find some bones or minerals for an upgrade. Everything you gather will be useful, and you'll save time by gathering as much as you can along the way. Any questionable materials, I will be providing where to get them as we talk about the upgrades themselves. Insect Glaive is a kind of hybrid melee and ranged weapon, but it has insane amounts of mobility and you can use it to jump around like an idiot. This guide will also go briefly into Kinsex. Speed is the preference as they are the easiest type to use on top of having good synergy with the recommended weapon paths bonus to speed Kinsex. Blunt vs Sever is going to be your preference, but you're unlikely to get knockouts with Kinsex, so Sever will be more useful as you can use it to assist you in cutting tails. The short answer is, build the Kulu Glaive to bridge you into the Toby Kadachi path, and then use that for the entirety of the game. Wow, how exciting. Then from here you can pick up the Nergigante Glaive and a few others. Kinsex have a very easy linear progression starting with Coldrome 1 and ending with Pseudocath 3, which is arguably the best Kinsect in the game. Now for the long answer. The Iron Blade 1 you start with is good for the first few missions. You'll want to upgrade it as soon as possible to an Iron Blade 2 by using 2 Iron Ore. Also take the opportunity to upgrade your Cold Drone 1 into a Cold Drone 2 by using 3 Iron Ore. Use this to take on the Great Jagras and then the Kulu Yaku. After the Kulu Yaku, upgrade your Iron Blade 2 into a Kulu Blade 1 by using 1 Kulu Yaku Beak, 2 Kulu Yaku Hide, and 3 Kulu Yaku Scales. Continue with your mandatory hunt of a Pookie Pookie. If you prefer, you can build the Pookie Pookie path and gain poison damage, but you'll be able to inflict poison with your kin set, which makes the Kulu Blade 1 overall preferred. Now hunt Baroth in the Wildspire Wastes. Mine here to get Earth Crystals. Once you get two, upgrade your Cold Drone 2 into a Cold Drone 3 by using two Earth Crystals and one Monster Bone M. Follow up by hunting Juratotus as part of standard progression. You can build the Aqua Rod 1 here as an optional upgrade as it will bridge into the Diablos path later, but the Kulu Blade 1 will be sufficient. Hunt Toby Kadachi as your next mandatory hunt. Afterwards, build a Bone Rod 1 and upgrade it to a Bone Rod 2 by using 3 Monster Bone S. Upgrade it again to a Pulsar Rod 1 by using 1 Toby Kadachi Claw, 3 Toby Kadachi Scale, and 2 Toby Kadachi Pelt. You'll gain a 30 raw damage spike over Kulu Blade 1 add Thunder Element, and maintain Speed Boost and the 10% Affinity. It's by far the strongest Insect Glaive you can have up to this point, and stays at the top until things like Diablos come into play. Now you'll have to hunt Anjaneth as part of the story. Afterwards, upgrade your Cold Drone 3 into a Wind Chopper 1 by using 1 Monster Bone L and 1 Macolite Ore. After defeating Zora Magdaros, don't worry, it's a set piece and you can't really lose, you'll gain access to the Coral Highlands. In the Coral Highlands, you're forced into an expedition to explore. You can mine here for Dragonite Ore and Coral Crystal. You'll need Dragonite Ore for your Kinsect and Coral Crystal for your Glaive. Upgrade your Wind Chopper 1 into a Wind Chopper 2 by using 2 Dragonite Ore and 3 Macolite Ore. Now upgrade your Pulsar Rod 1 into a Pulsar Rod 2 by using 2 Toby Kadachi Electrode, 3 Toby Kadachi Claw, 2 Electro Sack, and 3 Coral Crystal. Continue progressing by hunting Paolumu, unlocking the Rotten Vale, hunting Rataban, then returning to the Coral Highlands to take out a Legiana. After Legiana, you'll hopefully gain Monster Bone Plus. Use them to upgrade your Pulsar Rod 2 into a Pulsar Rod 3 by using 2 Monster Bone Plus, 2 Toby Kadachi Electrode, 2 Toby Kadachi Membrane, and 2 Warped Bones. Warped Bones can be harvested from bone piles in the Rotten Vale. After you get Monster Bone Plus, you can also upgrade your Kinsect, but you'll need Rathian Webbing. Hunt a Rathian, get webbing, and upgrade your Wind Chopper 2 into a Wind Chopper 3 by using 2 Monster Bone Plus and 1 Rathian webbing. These are your final upgrades for low rank. Finish up your mandatory hunts of Odegaron, followed by Rathalos and Diablos in whatever order you choose. After beating the Zora Magdro set piece and killing a deceptively strong Pookie Pookie, you'll gain access to high rank quests. Congratulations, the baby gloves are coming off. Our immediate goal in high rank is a weapon upgrade to compensate for the increased health of monsters with a long-term goal of bringing our sharpness to the next level. If you're lucky after the Pookie Pookie, you'll have received two monster Keenbone. Use these to upgrade your Kinsect. 
Upgrade your Wind Chopper 3 into a Pseudocath 1 by using 2 Monster Keenbone, 3 Carbolite Ore, and 2 Monster Broth. Carbolite Ore can be mined from high rank mining nodes, and Monster Broth can be carved from Vespoids and Hornitars. Use Red Pits on your Slinger to increase your chances of being able to carve them. Pseudocath is arguably the best Kinsect in the game, with amazing speed and power on top of having Blast as a dust effect. As is the custom, hunt Toby Kadachi the second you're able to in high rank to upgrade. Upgrade your Pulsar Rod 3 into a Kadachi Pillar 1 by using 3 Toby Kadachi Claw Plus, 4 Toby Kadachi Scale Plus, 3 Toby Kadachi Pelt Plus, and 3 Dragon Vein Crystal. Dragon Vein Crystal can be mined from red mining nodes in any high rank area. You have an option here. You can continue with the main story and hunt down the Pink Rathian, or you can go for Diablos for another upgrade to your weapon. Hunt Diablos for Majestic Horns. Breaking Diablos' horns with an Insect Glaive isn't the easiest thing to do, but you will be able to do it. You need 2 to upgrade your Kadachi Pillar 1 into a Kadachi Pillar 2. Upgrade by using 2 Majestic Horns, 2 Topi Kadachi Electrode Plus, 4 Topi Kadachi Claw Plus, and 3 Thunder Sack. Once you get this, you're set for the rest of the game. You'll now have to hunt Pink Rathian as part of standard story progression. Afterwards, you'll unlock the Elder's Recess. Defeating Pink Rathian should yield monster hardbones, and mining in the Elder's Recess will give you access to Fusia more. Use these to upgrade your Kinsec. Upgrade your Pseudocath 1 into a Pseudocath 2 by using 2 Monster Hardbone, 2 Fusia more, and 2 Inferno Sack. You can get Inferno Sacks from Anjanath, both types of Rathians, Urigans, and both types of Rathalos. With these upgrades, you'll be adequately prepared to do your next story hunt, which is Nurkigante. After your hunt, if you got two Elder Dragon Bones, you can upgrade your Kinsect to its final form. Use two Elder Dragon Bones, three Monster Hardbone, and one Fire Cell Stone to upgrade your Pseudocath 2 into a Pseudocath 3. Pseudocath 3 is arguably the best Kinsect in the game. You can also upgrade your Kadachi Pillar 2 into a Kadachi Pillar 3 by using two Nergigante Talon, four Toby Kadachi Electro Plus, six Toby Kadachi Claw Plus, and one Wyvern Gem. Wyvern Gems can be obtained from monsters like Baroth, Juratotus, and Rataban. Of course you should look into building Nergigante's Insect Glaive as it touts extremely high damage, sharpness, and Elder Seal. Achieve this by going through the Ore Path. Make a new Iron Blade 1 and upgrade to an Iron Blade 2, then into an Iron Blade 3, into a Steel Blade 1, into a Steel Blade 2, into a Steel Blade 3, and finally into a Chrome Blade 1. Now upgrade this one more time into a Nurgle Reaper by using 3 Nergigante Talon, 4 Nergigante Regrowth Plate, 2 Nergigante Tail, and 2 Nergigante Carapace. Congratulations, you now have a weapon that's completely capable of getting you through the rest of the game and one of the best insect glaives. This will be more than sufficient for taking out the remaining Elder Dragons. For final targets, if you want a raw insect glaive, you should definitely look into the Diablos path for the Tyrannus Glaive 2, which is the highest raw in the game, but it has low blue sharpness and minus 30% affinity. This will be able to be offset by decorations and gear choices at endgame. After taking out Xenogiva, you can upgrade the Nurgle Reaper one more time into Catastrophe's Light by using two Xenogiva Horns, five Nergigante Horn Plus, 5 Nergigante Talon and 1 Nergigante Gem. The gems will make these final glaives take some time to get, but will be great options for general purpose hunting. Thanks for watching. If you thought this video was helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Guides for the rest of the weapons are on the way.